Many hearing him were astonished, verse 2, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? In other words, they are absolutely amazed at how he is teaching and the things that he has done. But instead of being full of wonder at it and praising God at it, the first thing that comes through their mind is, how can we put this guy down? In verse 3, is not this the carpenter? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? And then it says the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon. So those are his four brothers which are there. And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Now the word offended means ashamed, embarrassed, upset. There's a whole bunch of meanings that could be applied to the word offended. It doesn't mean that he did anything that caused them to be offended. It meant that they had a problem with him being as good as he was. But Jesus said to them under verse 4, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could do no mighty work there, not because his priesthood authority was any less, but because the people had no faith to bring to pass, the, to bring in front of him the people who were sick that he could heal them. He he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and he healed them. But the vast majority of people just pretended that this was just, you know, uh, Jesus the carpenter who came home for a short visit. He marveled because of their unbelief. He went around all the villages teaching. He called upon the twelve in verse 7, sent them forth two by two. This is an interesting thing here, this going forth two by two. You go forth two by two so that you have a witness that you were righteous and that you did the right thing, and you can one can support the other in case you're having some difficulty. Gave them power over unclean spirits, commanded them they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse. They should be shod with sandals, and they should not put on two coats. It was very common for a person to wear two coats, and that one would help you be warmer, of course, but the other one would be used as bedding and stuff like that. Basically, just go and, wor and, and, and preach. That was what he was sent to do. That's what he wanted them to do. Whatsoever place you go, abide there until you leave that town. And if the people will not accept you, understand it will be more tolerable. Even though Sodom and, and Gomorrah are totally destroyed, in the day of judgment it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah, who never had the apostles, this is the point, who never had the apostles visit, than for a place that had the apostles visit and rejected them. And the apostles went out and preached that men should repent. That was the message. That cast out many devils, anointed with oil, many that were sick, and healed them. Now Herod, he hears about this. And he said, that is John the Baptist. Jesus was, that he was thinking John the Baptist had risen from the dead. And here we hear from Mark the story of how John the Baptist was killed by Herod himself. The story that we first heard in Matthew, in the early chapters in Matthew. Therefore Herodias, in verse 19, Herodias was Philip's wife who married Herod. And since Herodias already had at least the daughter, we know. There was no need for, and it was not right for Herod to marry Herodias because she was a widow and she had at least one child. Herod, it says in verse 20, feared John, knowing that he was a just man and an holy man. And he was willing to keep him in jail, but he made the mistake of doing something that we have been warned against and warned against and warned against. Do not make promises with oaths. And here is what happened. Herod's on his birthday. He had supper with his lords, his high captains of his military, and the chief estates of Galilee, all those people who had large holdings, land holdings, in Galilee. And his daughter danced, and he said, He swear unto her with an oath, Whatsoever thou shalt ask, I will give it thee unto half of my kingdom. Now why he would say anything that stupid, nobody can figure out. But this was the kind of stupid oath that people would give. And this is why they were warned against these. 
And so she she basically said, I'd like time to think about this, I'm sure. Then she went unto her mother and said, what shall I ask? And the mother, Herodias, said, the head of John the Baptist. Because even though Herod might have feared John the Baptist, Herodias was vicious and she wanted this guy killed because she said, because John had basically accused her of committing adultery with Herod, which she had, in fact, been doing according to Jewish law. Said the king was exceedingly sorry, yet for his oath's sake, in verse 26, and for the sakes of the of their sakes which sat with him. In other words, so he wasn't embarrassed, so he didn't have to break his word. He would not reject a request, and so he immediately sent an executioner to kill John the Baptist, thereby becoming a murderer. Even though he did not kill him personally, he caused him to be killed. That made Herod a murderer. His followers found, found out about it, came and took his corpse, laid it in a tomb. The apostles were gathered together, and they want they they wanted to talk with Jesus. They wanted to know, but they couldn't even have time. It said in verse thirty one, and he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest for a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure. These the Savior and the apostles didn't even have time to eat. They had so many people coming. And so they departed into a desert place, and the people saw them, and the people ran to where they figured they were going to go. And the Savior had compassion on them, in verse 34, because they were sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was over, there was no place that they could buy food, and it would have cost 200 pennies worth, which would be 200 days wages to buy bread for these people. And the Savior said, how many loaves and how many fishes have we got? Five loaves and two fishes. And this is, and the interesting thing to me is verse 40. The people sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. Now, they just didn't sit down and wait to be served. They organized themselves. The people organized themselves and sat down in groups so that they could be fed quickly and well. The loaves and the fishes were blessed and break and they were fed, and there was stuff left over after everybody did eat. And basically he said to, this, to this, his apostles, okay, you guys take off on a ship, I'll meet up with you later. And he watched, and they, they were rowing, and the sea was hard against them, and the wind was against them, and he decided he'd go out. And so he was walking on the sea, and would have passed by them, but they saw him walking on the sea. And supposing in verse 49 it had been a spirit, they cried out. And he said, basically in verse 50, Be a good cheer, it's, it's I, be not afraid. And he went up into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were amazed in themselves beyond measure. And they wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. At this point in time already, they were used to seeing miracles. And it doesn't mean their heart was hardened in the sense of they were unrepentant or whatever. They just were not as amazed at that as they could have been and probably should have been. They just expected that the Savior was able to do this. So hardened didn't mean negative or hostile. It just meant they were used to seeing that sort of thing. And so it was nothing special to them. But walking on the water, that was something else. And then it talks about, in verse 56, they get over into another new region, and the people there are so desirous of having the Savior save their people and heal their people, that the, pe the people began to carry about in beds those that were sick when they heard he was there. And in every town or village or city or wherever you want, they laid the people, the, the sick ones, in the streets, in cots probably, and they asked him if they might just touch the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. That's pretty spectacular. 